In November 1969, an event was reported which shocked America. In a village called Mi Lai, a company of American soldiers had massacred 347 villagers, including women and children. What was not made public was the role of the CIA's Operation Phoenix, which was responsible for telling the American patrol that Mi Lai was a Viet Cong village. The wave of public revulsion over Mi Lai helped create the political mood in America which hastened the end of the war. But the CIA was to be involved in another episode which also profoundly shocked America. That fatal slip, which seems almost trivial in the context of its past, was the agency's involvement through Richard Nixon with Watergate. One of the causes of the downfall of Richard Nixon is that he saw this thing at his right hand, which was an instrument for deceit, and he thought, he had a brilliant idea, he thought, why not use it domestically? I've got some problems right here at home, and uh, here's something that I can, that was built to take care of foreign enemies. Uh, let's take care of my domestic ones, too. History came back to haunt Richard Nixon and the CIA in the person of Howard Hunt, a former CIA agent and an architect of the disastrous invasion of Cuba in 1961. In 1972, Hunt was found to have masterminded the Watergate burglary for Nixon using CIA veterans from Cuba and CIA equipment. What general assistance did you get from the CIA relating to Watergate? No direct uh, assistance at all. Uh, there were some documents... Uh, matters, items of disguise uh, that the men used uh, when they may actually made the entry into the Watergate premises. And these were given to you by the CIA? That had been provided by the CIA to the White House. And you really also visited the CIA headquarters many in, times? In connection with uh, a prior operation, that is to say the West Coast operation. Watergate forced the resignation of Richard Nixon and Howard Hunt was jailed. But the CIA didn't escape the remorseless process of investigation which was set in train. Late last year, the post-Watergate insistence on open government unearthed another damaging episode. The CIA had secretly backed the forces which brought down the left-wing government of President Allende in Chile in 1973. The CIA successfully financed Allende's opponents for 15 years, but in 1970 they miscalculated his support and did little to help the opposition. Allende, a Marxist, won by a small majority in a democratic election. Secretary of State Kissinger was disturbed. With President Nixon's agreement, he ordered an economic freeze on Chile. The CIA also went into action behind the scenes, and in the next three years, millions of dollars were spent in efforts to undermine Allende. But before these facts came out, Richard Helms, the CIA's director during the Chile campaign, had testified on oath before Congress that the agency played no part in Allende's downfall. When he stood up before the Senate to testify, he was asked certain questions about his operations in Chile. He was asked, did you spend any money to overthrow the Allende government? And he said, no, sir. He asked if he had conducted any covert activities against the Allende government, and he said, no, sir. And for that, he probably, in uh, the post-Watergate era, will be indicted for perjury. That, that's a decision we'll learn about in a few weeks. Because shortly uh, after he had made that statement, his predecessor, Colby, went up to Congress and told him the truth. How did this come about, this turnaround in policy? Watergate. Richard Helms is going by the old CIA tradition, which is that, if necessary, the director will openly lie. CIA's involvement in covert action. In the post-Watergate atmosphere, even secret services aren't allowed secrets. William Colby, the new director of the CIA, had told a congressional committee in strictest confidence how the agency had indeed spent $8 million financing opposition to Allende. So enraged was Congressman Michael Harrington that he leaked Colby's secret testimony to the press and exposed the earlier deception. I went in prepared to accept the ground rules of secrecy, but it was... Obviously, it's such pronounced variance with what both I had believed and what the American public had been told. I think it was very important, and still do, that in some fashion, preferably without the distraction of how it was released, to get the American public to understand what we did in the context of uh, a country like Chile, not in the mid-50s, but in the early 1970s. The secret information given to Harrington showed that the CIA's so-called Dirty Tricks Department was active in Chile. First, in a bid to stop the endorsement of Allende, who had scraped home so narrowly, the CIA earmarked $350,000 to bribe Chilean congressmen. That plan failed, and Allende became president. 
The CIA then set about undermining him. They helped finance demonstrations by middle-class women who beat pots and pans outside Allende's house each day. They also financed more sinister groups like the right-wing terrorist group Fatherland and Freedom Party, which blew up bridges and radio transmitters and caused riots. But the catalyst that finally paved the way for Allende's overthrow was the one used successfully by the CIA in Guyana ten years before, a prolonged strike, this time by Chilean lorry owners. 2,700 miles long, Chile is totally dependent on road transport. The result was chaos. The strikers stayed out for six weeks, subsidised secretly by the CIA. The chaos of the CIA-backed strike gave Allende's opponents in the Chilean armed forces the excuse they needed. The presidential palace was bombed. Allende died inside it, and 15,000 socialists were murdered by the military regime, now one of the most repressive in Latin America. I think it was a mistake for us because it was a terrible embarrassment for it to, to come out. Uh, I think we pay for it in uh, shame and in loss of dignity. Who, in fact, ran the... Dr. Kissinger ran the Chile operation, very much like a desk officer. He's that way. He likes to do things himself. 